Hey everyone. You know, you know, I've talked about MLP FIM a lot. You know, even though I don't watch the series, I do collect some of the figurines and cards or whatever you want to call them. Um, as you know, out of nostalgia, due to the fact that I grew up originally with what we consider G1. It's out of nostalgia and respect that I collect them. And the respect part comes from seeing how far this franchise has, has you know, evolved to the point that it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what gender. Obviously, it doesn't matter what age. Uh, if you like the show, if you like the stories, if you like the characters, then that's perfectly fine. I mean, sure, there's, sure, there's going to be people still that question why a man or a teenage boy or a college-bound student uh, of the Mayo persuasion, you know, why they like MLP. Why they like MLP FIM? Why they like a certain character? You know, the they'll still question that. They'll question that even till, well, maybe not the maybe not the dying day. But they'll question that uh, to the point that they will do whatever it takes to get an answer. Or do whatever it takes to change that person's mind. Now, people like myself and Matt Burnett, Anna Matt, and several others, <clears throat> you know, we may respect the show and get a kick out of some of the things that happened in it, but we're not diehard fans. And if we get anything, like I said, merchandise wise or figure wise, we only get them to collect out of respect for how far the franchise has evolved. And for someone like me, out of nostalgia due to the fact that I grew up back at a time when this franchise began. Now, now with that said, the biggest question is how is how far will MLP FIM go? We know that somewhat we know that somewhat both IDW's adaption and the cartoon itself are similar, but they vary in difference in differences. What I mean by similar is it's the same characters, same same characters, you know, same kind of similar kind of adventures, things like that. But the one thing about the comics that IDW does is they actually spin off into what's known as micro series or team up series, and they focus on other characters that normally wouldn't get focused on in the cartoon. Another thing about the IDW comic, which Move some hair here off the uh, uh, desk, I should say. Hold on. There we go. But the um, but the one thing I've noticed, maybe it's just me, but the one thing that I've noticed with the IDW comic is this little, is the stories at times, either the over over uh, what's it? Overbearing arcs, maybe multi-issue arcs. I've noticed that they could be darker, if not a little bit more mature, in some retrospectives than what you see with the cartoon. I'm not saying the cartoon can't do that either. It can. Which brings me to a subject that really surprised me. You see, I found, I heard I heard and then found out that someone on the one of the MLP Facebook group pages 
posted a picture, a screenshot of a Twitter conversation between one of the head writers for the comic book, Jeremy Whiteley, as well as a response by, make sure I get his name right here, Jim Miller, who's one of the writers on the show. And the disc and the Twitter, <coughs> excuse me, and the Twitter, this conversation obviously continued off something that Jeremy had said at BabsCon. Yeah, BabsCon, which is one of the uh, MLP conventions, MLP FIM, or MLP FIM uh, fan conventions, whatever you want to call it. And um, here's 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 what really here's what that conversation was about. Here's what uh, the poster of this on the uh, the poster of this on the one of the groups. They asked the question, and this is what got my attention, or got my not just my attention, but got other people's attention that got mine. Here's what they said, and I quote. Would you want an LGBT episode on the show? Now, LGBT, if I'm correct, is lesbian and gay. Uh, the BT, I <laughs> don't always know what that's about, but I think I got an idea. Let me just check. Here you go. Okay, LGBT, uh, just in case somebody don't know, it stands for Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and transgen Transgender. Yeah, Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender. Now, the, the reason uh, someone asked that question on one of the uh, Facebook pages is because, like I said, Jeremy Whiteley of the comic um, said this. This is what they said. This is what uh, the, uh, the poster on the Facebook page who asked that question said about Jeremy Whiteley. They said, and I quote, this is before I talk about the, I, uh, um, uh, I talk about the picture you see in front of you right now. Jeremy Whiteley, according to them, and I quote, Jeremy Whiteley, an IDW writer for the FIM comics, Friendship is Magic comics, wants Flutter Dash to be canon in Friendship is Magic's FIM's storyline. Someone, someone by the name of Morrison, that's M U R R I S O N, took a screenshot of the tweets and sent it to Jim Miller, one of the writers on the show. He agreed with Jeremy Whiteley. He, he agreed with Jeremy Whiteley, that being Jim Miller. Would you want an LGBT episode on the show? Would it affect the fandom? Now this is what the poster said, and I quote, I'll continue on, and I quote, In my opinion, I think we totally should get an episode representing the LGBT. That would be awesome. It would be really important, it would be a really important episode for kids who are questioning the sexuality. What do you think? Well, I'll answer that question a little bit, but I want to look at the uh, tweet, for example, the screenshot that Mor Morrison uh, put up. Let me see if I can uh, get to it. Okay, here it is. <coughs> and I do apologize. But I'm going to answer that question in a little bit. I think some of you may know what my answer is. All right. This is what uh, Jeremy Whiteley said on his um, Twitter that M Morrison uh, sent to uh, Jim Miller through tw uh, Twitter. 
This is what Jeremy Whiteley said. This is a screenshot of what Jeremy Whiteley said, and I quote, and this is from Jeremy Whiteley's uh, Twitter, which, like I said, uh, Morrison posted a screenshot to, uh, saved a, uh, made a screenshot of, I should say, and sent it to Jim Miller. And here's what Jeremy Whiteley said, and I quote, On our toasted, wi on our toasted writers panel, at BabsCon tonight, I said that Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy should come out as a couple. I mean that. And this is Jeremy Whiteley on his Twitter, I guess responding to whether or not he was joking or not. I don't know. He continues on with another tweet. LGBT representation in all ages fiction is important for both kids it is important both for kids of same-sex couples and kids questioning their own sexuality. He concludes, and this being Jeremy Whiteley, he concludes, it's more important for queer kids to know they're not alone than to protect straight kids living in an implied norm. All right. Now, more, now, Morrison sent this, like I say, to Jim Miller and said that this is for IDW and this is what he, Jeremy Whiteley, wants to add to FIM's canon continuity. What should we expect from this? Now, uh, Jim here, if I can uh, zoom in on it a little bit. Right. Jim here, in response to Morrison's screenshot of Jeremy Whiteley's uh, tweets, responds, and I quote, He's totally right that more kids shows should showcase a broadest selection of relationships. But, and he continues on, it's the kind of decision that would, make, that would be made and be on my pay grade. Okay. That's what he says. It's, he says it's the kind of decision. Is, this is what he says so far. He says he totally agrees. He's with Jeremy Whiteley. And that in, he says he's totally right about more kids shows should showcase a broader selection of relationships. But, and this is coming from Jim Miller, it's the kind of decision that would be made well beyond my pay grade. <clears throat> Now, Morrison responds to uh, this by saying, responds to Jim Miller by saying, I assume you haven't seen the backlash following the Powerpuffs Girls' new cartoon and new direction then. Jim Miller responds by saying that he has a hard time keeping up with most cartoons. Now there are, now, there are other replies, but they're not posted. Now, now, overall, that's all we get from this. And there are some people that do have responded. There are some people. One person would like to see Rarity Dash as a canon. One person responded by saying, by mentioning the whole Smithers finally coming out in the Simpsons deal. And even though that was back in the 90s when it was pretty much a given that we all we all knew, and I think every other character in the show knew that he was gay, and only Burns didn't know till now. Oh, and one person said that, let's be fair, but after mentioning that, one person says, uh, gay relationships in a family or kid show is very problematic and difficult to skirt around. This one responder says, I'm not going to say any names, but this one responder, after mentioning that, like I said, that Smithers uh, situation, goes on to say, and I quote, I mean, it goes on to say, and I quote, I mean, it's not, not that it'd be bad. I just think it's the wrong age demographic. 
like the six-year-olds are too young to be taught anything like that. Heck, even an episode of Adventure Time got controversial and was pulled from TV syndication because it implied that Princess Bubblegum and Marcel, Marcel, or Marcel were once an item. But let's think about why this could be a good idea. And this is the same person. I continue and I quote. The show is six years old now. So likely any child that started watching it all these years ago might be 12 now. And started to learn about sexuality and all that. It could be like aging the show up with its target audience. Like how the, like how the How to Train Your Dragon sequel matured along with its audience. And then they put in parentheses, or we could try a settleable throwaway line that applies a character's sexuality, like Goober, and How to Train Your Dragon too. Let me see. Is there any other part? See. Uh, yeah, basically another person, some other people back and forth him go back and forth with him saying that indicating there were others that watch the show that are a lot older now than, you know, six when it started. So now one person replies by saying, let's keep sexuality out of the show. Kids need more time to be innocent. They have the rest of their lives to know about this. This is the parents job to talk to them about it as they're older. One person replies by saying, nope, they should, kids should know. Okay, so with that all said, and us being almost 20 minutes in, 17 minutes actually, let me give you my thoughts on this. Okay, my thoughts are, it's in the hands of the writers. That's what it is. My thoughts are, you want to go ahead and do it, go ahead and do it. They've pretty much proven in a show like Steven Universe that nothing's off limits. Okay? They've proven that. Now, here's the thing, though. Even though they've proven in Steven Universe that nothing's off limits, when you especially when you get the backstory of how, uh, what's her name, uh, Garnet came to be. Nothing's really off limits. However, there are some times where an episode will get pulled or will get taken off uh, off the air due to sensitivity. And this is something that's been going on for a while. A good example, as I've mentioned, was the Bonkers cartoons uh, episodes, the Disney Bonkers episodes of New Partners on the Block, Fall Apart Squad, Witness to the a prosecution or witless to the prosecution episodes like that all because of the sensitive material same with Disney's tailspin they had a couple of episodes that got taken off for a little while due to the due to their sensitivity the point is some issues back then and nowadays can be too controversial now if you're a writer doesn't matter if it's for the comic for a comic book adaptation of the same uh, franchise or not. You know you're always going to think that you can, you're always going to have this belief, in all due respect to Jeremy Whiteley. But you're always going to have this belief that what you can do in the comic you can also do on television if there's an physic if there's an actual television adaptation airing at the same time. Now. There might have been some kind of indication earlier on, maybe a slight subtle indication of LGBT and MLP with um, an episode several weeks ago or something like that with involving a swan, Pinkie Pie, and all that. I don't know. I don't really know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But the point is, there has been some subtle hints, I think, in the past to that. And I think one episode of this current season, from what I understand, may have thrown a subtle hint at it. Thrown a, thrown a subtle hint at it. And maybe that's what's all, all that's necessary. Just throw a subtle hint. You don't have to basically come out and say, hey, let's make 
uh, Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash a couple and basically throw it into people's faces on the show on a constant basis. No, you can't do that. You can't do that because of the fact that there's going to be a lot of controversy with it. I mean, let's be honest. There's a lot of there are thousands, if not millions, of LGBT groups and people out in this world, here in the United States, here in North America, all over. But just as many as there are of them, of the LGBT people and groups and supporters, there are just as much, if not maybe a tiny bit more, of those that oppose all of that. There are. And I'm not trying to say that because I'm a born-again Christian. I'm not saying that because of that. I'm just saying that there are non-religious people. There are non-born-again Christians, non-Catholics, non-Baptists, Baptists, and such. People of non-religion all the way around that believe that believe marriage and romance should be treat, should be between only a man and a woman. That is a fact. You don't have to be of any religion or anything or belief or any religion or anything like that, but you do have sometimes a high standard of, hey, a man and a woman should be the only ones that fall in love and get married. That is your, that would be your primary belief, your primary reasoning to be against the LGBT people and groups. Now, you know, true religion does play a factor in it sometimes. I'm not denying that. I don't think anybody would. And yes, it's your choice if you want to come out and say, hey, look, this is how who I am. You got to deal with it. Then fine. That's your choice. You know what my mom says? You know my mom and anybody else I've talked to, or anybody else just talk to my mom or talk to my family, talk to people I've been around. They all say that God has a reason for things. And Lord, forgive me for saying this. If God has a reason for certain people coming out and saying that they're lesbian, they're gay, they're bisexual, they're transgender. If he has a reason for that, then so be it. There's a reason. But the point is, just because... The point I'm trying to get at is just because you think you could probably get away with it in the com in a comic book or novelization adaption or structure and adaption of the same uh, same kind of the same property that is currently airing on television as either an animated show or maybe a live action show isn't always necessarily going to ha isn't necessarily true. And it's not necessarily going to happen. I mean, sure, some might say, well, it's about progress, Brian. It's about evolving. Yeah, but I think one person that commented that I read, one person's comment that I read said it best. That this is a show initially intended. Think about it. They, this one person, and if I can find it again. This one person basically see, said that this they need to keep sexuality out of the show. And it's the parents' job to talk to the kids about this. Now, the, the one person that said, or that mentioned the whole Smithers thing and everything, said that a lot of the kids that started watching this MLP FIM were six years old when it started. Now, now, 12 years old. That's fine. That's true. Some could have started watching it at seven or eight and now they're 13 or 14. That's true, too. But, and some could have watched it at nine or 10 and now they're 15, 16. That's true. But the point is, the point I'm trying to make is this. You know, a lot of people are going to point out to that one thing, that the show initially was for 
as that one person put it, six years old, if not younger. I think that's what they said. Yeah. Now, one responder, I will say this, one responder said this, and I, and I quote, one person said this, although viewers from when it first came out are older now, you still have to think of the kids who are just getting into it. They say, I know a few kids that range from four to eight who just started watching the show. Now, the one person, now this, the original poster says, uh, now the response to that, I should say, is this. One person responds by saying, which is why this is pretty, which is why this is a pretty touchy issue. I'd rather they not try and get into the issue, at least they end up with an infamous band episode like, God forbid, Pepe Pig. Gasp. Now, another, now the, now it's just like I said, it's a back and forth deal, but then another person brings up that they had issues with Derpy. Pretty sure anything more than a slight disability would really be bashed upon. So, you know, basically they are acknowledging that the show has had some issues with certain episodes and certain stories and all that and characters in the past, but what's being implied here by Jeremy Whiteley, in all due respect to the guy, is wanting to take something that I don't think he realizes young kids that watch the show may or may not be ready for. And when this one pro, uh, poster says that there are kids four to eight right now one of the key ages being four, that's just getting into the show, they may not totally understand the whole LGBT deal. I mean, I'm sure when the, no, when the news comes on and they're talking about LGBT groups or people, that the kids are out of the room. Parents don't want them to see this because they don't think their minds can handle it. Now, maybe if they get older to eight years old, it might be a different story, but still, it may not be. It might be still the same case scenario. And that is, keep the kids away from this until the time is right to talk to them about it, until they're at that appropriate age. And I think that's what a lot of people are going back and forth on here. They're basically saying, yeah, it's a good idea to try, but there's also problems that could come with it. And those problems being the backlash you would get from parents and parental groups, and maybe even the FCC and whoever else, of trying to bring this to the forefront. And what's interesting about this is I think I know why Jeremy Whiteley wants to do this. He wants to do this to, like I say, to evolve the comic even more, to touch base on all aspects of the fan base. Because there are, let's, let's not argue, let's not kid ourselves, there are LGBT members of the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic fan base. We know that. That's a fact. But with that being said, with that being said, mind you, just because there are those members of the fan base out there, it doesn't necessarily mean you could come out and create an episode and take two of the main seven now, I guess you could say, or two of the original main six, now main seven, and make them a couple. You can't do that. You can't really do that. I mean, they're more acceptive of someone like Spike having feelings for rarity and vice versa and going with that. But to go in a direction where you're pretty much implying that two of the original main six, now main seven, are a couple, it's not going to fly. Now the question one person asks is, will it change the fandom? You know, it just might. It might just change the fandom because you may gain more fans and you may lose some fans. There are some fans of the fan base right now, I guarantee that when they hear about this, and I'm pretty sure they have already because it's been up for over 24 hours, I'm pretty sure they're going to be like, heck no, 
You know, we we don't need that in the in the show. You know, there's no reason for Fluttershy or Rainbow Dash to be a couple. Oh, there's no reason for Starlight Glimmer and Twilight Sparkle to be a couple. You know, what's the point? You know, what's the point of all that? If they go in that direction, I'm not going to watch anymore. Heck, I'm not going to go see the movie if they do that. There are people that will be like that. Because in their minds, whether they are straight or LGBT, they will agree that sometimes certain subjects are not, do not belong to in certain shows, especially if it's a show aimed at all ages, more specifically when it was originally came out for the young female for the young female audience, the young girls, the young kids, if you will. So, in my opinion, like I said, though my thoughts, if they if they go with it, fine. It's on it's on the heads of those at Hasbro. It's on the heads of those at the creative staff of the show. It's on the heads of those that give it the overall green light to be made. And even if they tried it over at the IDW adaption, the same thing. It's going to be on Hasbro. It's going to be on IDW. It's going to be on everybody that works on that comic. It's going to be on their heads to greenlit that kind of a situation for to happen. Or that kind of story to happen. It's going to be on their heads. And either it's on their heads because they get a positive response or reaction and get praise for actually going in that direction, for doing something this different. Or it's on their heads for getting the negative reaction that a lot of people, from what I can sense, my opinion, I can sense they believe they will get. It'll be on their heads. Because they would have greenlit an idea that is not going to come across as as good, maybe in the eyes of some. Now, it might come across as good because at least you're taking a stand and saying, hey, look, you can't just limit LGBT subjects and storylines and, and the such to mature comic, you know, mature comic books like Marvel and DC and, and such, and or even... You know, live action shows and movies by Warner Brothers and Sony and, you know, maybe even Disney for that matter. You know, you just can't limit it to them. You got to open the, the door. You got to open up the broader aspect and let every kind of medium out there acknowledge it. Let them acknowledge it in some way. And that's true. That, and I will admit that that is true. But there are certain things, certain properties in the eyes of a lot of people that should not cross into that territory just yet. They shouldn't. Because I can guarantee you this. I can guarantee you this. If it does happen, if the people at Hasbro would give the okay, the thumbs up for the animation staff and the writers, the creative staff on the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic cartoon series, the animated series, if they were to give the thumbs up and the green light, <coughs> light to um, do an LGBT episode where two of the main six, now seven, come out as a couple, in this case Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy, then they're going to have to deal with the controversy that comes with it. Because yes, they might get a positive reaction for taking a bold, bold step and bold move in doing it, but they're also going to get some negative reaction because there are going to be some people, critics, members of certain parental groups, F certain members of television acts, FCCs, whatever, they're going to come out and say, hey, this is wrong what you're doing. You should not do this episode and we're going to do whatever we can to take it off the air or get it banned. So they're going to, like I said earlier, they are going to have to live with that controversy that weighs upon their head if they decide to make that decision. If, they, if Hasbro decides to greenlit the idea. In the same way as if Hasbro green, allows greenlit, greenlits the idea for IDW to do. IDW might have a little bit more freelance to do it, but they'll still be met with controversy as well because 
the comic book adaptation, even though it might be darker at times and a bit more mature at times in some areas, they'll still get backlashed and controversially, or controversy weighed down upon their heads because, yes, there will be some people that will be happy that they've come out and taken that step and acknowledged it and at least have said, hey, these two characters are an item. But in the end, they're going to get that backlash from other communities, parental groups, maybe some, you know, some parental groups, just, just like I mentioned before. There'll be certain parental groups. There'll be certain, you know, comic book groups that are against it. that have some, some, ha some power to basically get an issue pulled. You know, you'll, you know you, you'll have certain groups and everything out there that will have the pool, have that power to say, no, that issue may be on the shelves now or may be ready to be shipped, shipped out to subscribers, but nope, not going to happen. Pull it. It's not, it may be in existence, but nobody's going to see it because we don't want them to promote that kind of stuff. You know that's possible. You know that could happen. And that's where the controversy could lie within. But in closing, because I know this video is going long, this audio video is going long, in closing, I will say this. Once again, my opinion and thought is, my thoughts on it is, it's in the hands of Hasbro. If Hasbro wants to greenlit the creative staff on the animated series and greenlit the IW, IDW writing staff on the comic book series to do it, then all power to them. But they're the ones that are going to have to live with the controversy and the positive and negative reactions that they will get. But basically the controversy of those of this subject matter being brought to light. So let me know what you guys think down below. Do you think they should do it? Or what do you think they should or do you think they should leave it alone? And if they do want to acknowledge it in some ways, do you think maybe more of a subtle hint is more appropriate? Let me know down below. Comment if you like. 